Hey everyone, Guy from Total Geek Live here, and we've got a very special show today. Of course, with us as always is Kaiser, Baltimore, Danny, and our newest face has been a longtime friend of mine, though you'd probably better recognize her from the other side of the screen as Mortal Kombat's Sonya Blade. Let's welcome the to Total Geek Live, Miss Carrie Hoskins. Carrie, hi! Yay! <laughs> so... I kind of wanted to get in a little bit of a background of like how you and I met, Carrie. Um, we've known each other since E3 96. Uh, you were portraying Vala from War Gods at Midway's booth, and I was a game counselor and tester at uh, Midway. That uh, my claim to fame that year was I fell down an entire flight of stairs at the LA Convention Center and spent a day nursing a sprained ankle in, in your talent's green room. Uh -huh. So, truly a destined meeting for the ages. <laughs> so he could get special attention oh yeah god that was i'm, I'm special like 16. what's that i said how old were you like 20 or 16 or something <laughs> wow <laughs> 19. <laughs> 19. <laughs> but uh yeah i was i was uh 19 and i i cleared an entire flight of stairs and i'm still falling downstairs to this day 20 something years later you're not the only one um <laughs> No, Baltimore, so. you fall up the stairs, <laughs> which defies all gravity and logic to me. So I, I remembered you doing uh, the, your role of Vala, and I remember during that show, um, your helmet went missing sometime during the course of the whole... It still pisses me off to this day. It, it, it was such a process to get that helmet made. I had, yeah. They had to cast my head. I had, like, <laughs> straws sticking out of my nose. Oh, man. Yeah, I had plaster all over my whole head, and the result was this beautiful custom helmet. And then somebody freaking stole it at the E3. I was so mad. Yeah, yeah I, I remember that all of one day. Did they ever find that, or do you think there's some guy out there to this day still feeling pretty in front of his mirror somewhere? <laughs> Never found it. <laughs> as, as long as he's feeling pretty in this day and age, that, that's all that matters. Um, so uh let's see well uh tell us a little bit about yourself you know what was um your background in all of uh, the mortal Kombat, and especially sonya blade and even midway in, in general i uh my background is gymnastics from high school and then in my later teens like 1920 i got into boxing mm -hmm. and it, back then it was called wwf wrestling um it originated out of Minnesota and we had this team of girls that would go from like club to club and do boxing and then we get pissed off at each other we would throw our gloves off and it would turn into WWF wrestling so that's, <laughs> that's how I learned my stunt work <laughs> because they teach you how to fall and all right. that stuff so um, just going into Midway with that you know they call I was working at Playboy as a, as a producer and a model and a hair and makeup artist and they just happened to call the office when I was there that day editing photos. Um, so I answered the phone and I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> so um, that was Jack Hagar who uh, called. So I showed up, we were supposed to be, I brought a friend, um, they wanted a cheerleader for NBA Jam. Um, so I picked a girl that I knew who knew how to do cheerleading because I had no idea. I was one of those girls that always made fun of the cheerleaders. <laughs> Stayed in the art room painting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, art geeks. I was way, way too shy to be cheerleading. So. Um, so she was just kind of off on the side doing cheers and then I would copy her. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, that went so well that they hired me for the next game, which I think was like Revolution X. And that mm. was that was a hoot. That was a lot of fun because I got to do two characters, a cage dancer and then um, Mistress Helga. Um, mm -hmm. I got to help, you know, create the costume. And um, and then, you know, I got to work with Aerosmith for a day, so that was a lot of fun. Wow. And you Pretty got cool. uh, prominently displayed on the side of the arcade cabinets as well. Yes, yes. I should get one of those, don't you think? I, at least yeah. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. Like mail one to me or something. <laughs> I'm sure you still have a few contacts over there. I don't know. <laughs> huh. It's like a thing. So, and then Mortal Kombat came around, and um, I was like a yellow a yellow belt in Tanksudo, and uh, had no experience. 
but um, they had somebody on the side. I don't even remember who it was. Might have been Carlos um, doing doing the moves. And since I was flexible and stuff, um, I just copied whatever they were doing. And you know, they told me to you know, put your fist up, turn it in, whatever. So I had some good coaches. And then you know, it all started from there. It turned it, the this game turned into a, a live tour, which me ending up being the um, person who, sorry, my dog's sniffing at me again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it turned out to be this live tour where we went to the Catskills Mountains and I had to train for 12 hours a day. Um, wow. Two months straight. I mean, I was hallucinating. I was so tired. Yeah. But that's, that's where I got the best training for, you know, martial arts. I'm, you know, on tour with 20 black belts. It was like having 20 big brothers because they would just pound the crap out of me. <laughs> Every time I turned the corner, I'd, ha- I'd have like this attack because they thought I needed all this training. Oh my gosh. Uh, plus they kind of, you know, everybody had all this training and then here comes me, you know, with no training at all. You're going to be on tour with us, really? <laughs> and I was also um, one of the spokespeople for that too. So I would fly ahead and do radio and, and, um, and TV and all that stuff. So it was a lot of fun. Really good experience, especially being attacked daily. I'd come home. <laughs> With bruises, <laughs> and it was all good. It was all good. Best training I've ever had. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. But here, twenty-five years later, we're still talking about it. <laughs> I know it, it's twenty-five years have passed since MK debuted in arcades. What What's your thoughts on all of that? Just the fact that it that game series has endured this long, and you were a part of that. Um, you know, I think it's because it was like we were pioneers. In, in the gaming industry and coin op, um, they're putting real people in there, and then the game got popular, and there was real people in there that you could identify with. You know, it wasn't just a cartoon; these mm-hmm. were real people that you could actually. I don't think you could email back then, could you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Smoke, it was getting there. Smoke by three it was. <laughs> yeah, so I got lots of fan mail and had to open up a PO box and. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and now we got Facebook, and it has not disappeared at all. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because I still actually have like one of those old Mortal Kombat books from back in the day. That actually, let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I'm I'm pull, I I have a whole box of old Midway archives from back in the day, and like, uh, let's see. Yep, you had a two-page interview from back then. Yeah, I remember so, that. I uh, thought I'd uh, bring that out from the old pile because I've got a billion things from everything. So, um, around here. <laughs> a few of us have had uh, worked on um, shows or movies or TV things and, and behind the scenes uh, aspect. Um, what was it like working uh, for Midway for a video game character behind the scenes how did that kind of process work i mean you talked about it earlier you were kind of uh watching someone off screen and then kind of emulating what they were doing how was the whole process for you it was the same process like you see on tv with a weatherman we had a green screen a green screen behind you and um you would just do all the moves in front of this green screen and then they would put the background in later so um the one problem i remember having was my eyes um, sometimes they're kind of greenish and sometimes they're bluish and they would have problems with the chroma key because my eyes would keep turning into the background. <laughs> oh, wow. That's wild. <laughs> but, um, yeah, each move you'd have to do eight different ways because a joystick goes eight different ways. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This process. You throw a punch and then you got to do it seven more times. So when you were, when you were doing, when you were working and they were filming you. How long was that? Uh, was that work for you? Was it a full, a full day, a couple of days? You know, how did that process? It's actually kind of funny because you know this day and age everything's just like quick, quick, quick. You know, and then back then it was a new process that they were kind of making up. So the computers would crash all the time. Oh, we in there, we do a move, and then they'd wait for it to. And then they'd sit there and bitch about, I need more RAM, I need more RAM. <laughs> and it, was like, it was always already maxed out on RAM. You know, you couldn't put any more in there. 
Oh, sheesh. And then it would crash. And it was just so much information that they were putting in for these games that the, the computers could hardly even handle it. Right. So um, we got paid pretty well. And most of the, the time that we got paid hourly was just sitting around waiting. Yeah, that's a lot yep. of what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, know that. Yeah. That's crazy. And so you kind of listed. You started NBA Jam, the cheerleader. You did the Mistress Olga and the Damsel in Distress and Re Revolution X. Sonya, which you're best known for, MK3, 4. Special Forces, did you have any hands? Uh, did you do any work on that before they kind of cut Sonya from the game? Um, was that the one with Katana? That, that was, was the one. Jack's yeah, it was the Jack Sonya focused game. And then when it finally came out, it was just Jax. But f for a good portion of development, Sonya was a main character. I was just curious, were you involved with that at all? Well, I know I played another character called Katana, where I had um, a black wig on, leather, and there was black stripes on the... Uh, for uh, Kia from Mythologies? Was that the yeah. Sub-Zero one? Okay. Yeah. Katana, yeah. It okay. was Kia. Yeah. And... Um, NBA Hang Time, you got your own character, uh, lockable character, right? You were one of the actual players in Hang Time at that yeah, point? Yeah, that later. I only shot for NBA Jam once. And okay. then any sequels that came out, they already had the, the data. Right. So you can dunk a basketball? Same with the Mortal Kombat, <laughs> because there was that one time where you just stood there and they took pictures, um, and then they would just basically peel you off and put you onto a model. And that's mm -hmm. when Cap started. Oh. Used for people, but they basically like, peel my face off and put it on a model. Oh, wow, that that was kind of the technology they I guess developed for like uh, war gods when you played Vala. They kind of oh. taking the photo and putting it over the polygons. Yeah, I didn't have to do any any moves for for um, war gods. It was just sitting there like this in costume. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but, wow. But Long then, days, I'm sure too. Oh, they put, like, poles under my arms, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's thoughtful. The te most tedious part was the costume was basically glued on me. So to get oh. it was really hard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. But then you got to do more mo actual motion capture for the Maya, for Killer Instinct, for Microsoft. Is that correct? Yep. How many years later? Like 20 years. 20 years later. Is that the last uh, game project you got involved in? Yeah, that was the last one. You know, besides doing these um, reunion things with Mortal Kombat. Oh, awesome. Seeing the old family back together. <laughs> oh, fun. Is there more reunions planned? Um, there is one, I think it's September 23rd. It's uh, Doc Mac is hosting it. Mm -hmm. Doing Combat Con. Oh, awesome. Where is that at? That's in Chicago. Oh, okay. Fun. Combat Con with two Ks. <laughs> Everything is okay with Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. um, Continue. Yeah. So, Carrie, going back to the the live tour, were there any? I mean, that's two hundred cities that that tour traveled around. I mean, there's got to be some really cool stories that you you've got to share with us about that experience. This is my first. <laughs> Ballroom brawl. Um, um, I got, we got uh, knives pulled on us at one time. So, it... whoa! <laughs> like in show or real life? Um, there was one where we had we had a show in California, mm -hmm. and we decided to walk across the border to Tijuana and party for the night. And was... <laughs> That's of course, yeah, I've done that. So, yeah, you know, I've been there. The night, <laughs> back to cross the border. And um, there was this gang that stopped us right in front of us. And they all had knives. And they were going to rob us or do whatever. And instead of us being scared, we all just busted out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Not the desired effect. I bet there that. I'm there. I've never felt safe in my life. And um, they start laughing. And they're all kind of taken aback. And they go, why are you laughing? And, and the guys started, do you know who we are? <laughs> they slowly just put their knives down and they're like go ahead oh my God. <laughs> wow. they didn't cry they didn't even want any part of that 
So that was that was one of my favorite stories. And another one was in New Orleans. Um, we were just sitting down at a nice restaurant, having dinner, and um, everybody got up to leave, and I was like one of the last few. And um, Hakeem, who's Jax, and his brother, um, we were sitting there, you know, drinking scotch or something like that and eating horseradish and they gave us the bill and it was like half of the cast was still on there and we're like we're not paying this it's just us three right here and um, so then you know they got into a confrontation and the hostess who was a very short man that's all the identification I'm going to put into it (laughs) he had a chip on his shoulder for some reason he ended up taking the stapler and throwing it across the room at Hakeem. It splits in two in the air, and part of it hits me in the face. Oh. Well, then I'm just standing there, you know, watching the scene, and then of course, you know, I get pissed off. So I lunged across the across the counter and grabbed his neck and started pounding on him. And also in the whole restaurant at this great big barroom brawl, and and um. Within, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, everything stopped and I was in a headlock. And I look up and it was Sydney. He mm-hmm. uh, he was like this 250 pound Samoan who had put me into the headlock. And I look up and I go, hey, hey Sid, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> wow. He said, um, they brought us out into the back and everybody's scared. We thought, they're thinking we're going to get arrested. And I said, don't worry, guys. I'm going to take care of this. I'll go talk to them. So I'm talking to the police. And I said, you know, we don't want to fight. That's what we do all day long when we're fighting on our, on the stage. And he's like, what are you talking about? So I told him who we were. And then he's like, oh, cool. And then he asked me for my autograph. And they let us go. And as we were leaving, the manager came out. He had ice on his chin. <laughs> And I go, oh, what happened to you? And he goes, you punched me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first experience in a great big fight. So yeah. you say first, is there a second and third experience bar fight? or? Well, no, you know, just when you're in a bar and the guy grabs you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So turn around and grab his you get, you got to throw down. Yeah. I mean, it's not appropriate. So, so what I've learned is I really need to go out drinking with you properly. <laughs> this is my, and New Orleans isn't that far away, so you know if you want to reprise, you know. Actually, I'm a very very peaceful person, but if yeah. you if you assault me, um, I just go off because yeah. I yeah. I don't like crowds anyway, so my my senses are heightened anyway, and I'm yeah. so someone coming by and grabbing me in a place they shouldn't just sets me off. Right. Yeah. Last time I was at Cubby Bear in Chicago, I was just waiting in line to go to the bathroom, and some guy came by and grabbed me. He was up against the wall with a beer on his shirt and my hand on his neck <laughs> about one second later. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> he was wow. so drunk, I don't even think he knew what he was doing. He was just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the girl that, <laughs> the girl that was ahead of me after um, I got back in line, she goes, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. Don't like to be grabbed. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Yeah, so, that was quick. Jay, didn't you touch me once in high school and I didn't expect it and you ended up across the hall? Yeah, there was that. <laughs> and I've never done it again. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So, Carrie, where... Um, where are you now in like your personal life? What's going on with your family? Uh, you're uh, more known for your painting uh, work these days. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I started painting like five years ago. I, w- I did have a training business. I was doing marathon training, training other people, and um, mm. I just got into painting. Um, it was just out of the blue. My my friend at the time, um, I was just you know complaining about doing all this philanthropic work, and then you know, you, you get into these these projects and then all of a sudden people start to expect it from you and start demanding and you're like, hey, I'm volunteering my time here. So I was just kind of complaining one day mm-hmm. and because um, I was, it was becoming like a full-time job for me doing all this free work, you know, graphic arts and, and whatnot. And my friend asked me at the time, he, uh, he was, well, if you could quote all, di- all that and do whatever you want, what would it be? And I said, 
I don't know, I'd probably open up a studio and start painting. And then I just kind of went, did I just? <laughs> so I started painting. And, um, you know, out of the blue, I, I started painting these portraits. And I didn't even know I could do it. My grandfather was a painter, so it was always in the back of my head. I painted a little bit in high school. That's all the training that I have. And it was like, you know, the 20, 25 years of life experience suddenly made me be able to start painting. So you know, gift from God, he, at that time, I was just diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos. My doctor told me to stop running. Um, I was really sad about that because it, I just have this huge um, love for running, you know, marathoning. But I was constantly injuring myself. And then being diagnosed with a rare condition, it's a connective tissue disorder, um, I had to quit. You know, it, there was no, there was no, right. just... I just wasn't capable of doing it anymore, you know, unless, and, you know, I have to stay strong for my boys because I have to lift them. I have twin boys with cerebral palsy. So, um, so I quit and then painting was my, my outlet. And then it suddenly turned into, you know, a business where I was doing it full time and selling and, and now it's, you know, I have a job that I absolutely love and can't wait to get up and and go into my studio every day. Oh, that's, oh, that's great. I recognize the painting on the wall behind you from your site. That one, and there's another one that's kind of rusty with this brilliant blue streak through it. Those two really stood out to me. They're really, really good stuff. I love that piece that's on the wall behind you. Thank you. Um, they, uh, I've been working with liquid metals for the metal is actually ground up in, in an acrylic base, so I paint it on, and then I add a chemical to make it oxidize. So oh, wow. the iron will turn to rust, and the copper will verdigree, the bronze will verdigree. I have a love for chemistry, too. I'm kind of a geek. And I play well, yeah. and You're in the right place. Right. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, that sounds really, really cool. So Welcome I'm like, home. Both <laughs> sides of the brain into these paintings, and it's just it's awesome, especially if I start doing patterns and stuff, then I'm lost hours <laughs> oh wow that's really amazing um so have you ever played mortal kombat at the arcades or played it uh, on the consoles or anything i tried i try not to play it in front of anybody because then they see that i really suck so i mean i'm sure guy has experienced it and probably walked away with his head down oh yeah that's the cool. worst one though actually involved you it was uh e397 uh we were testing mortal kombat 4 and i was up at the booth and i was playing as sonya blade sonya blade's one of my mains in sub-zero uh but i was playing and like you came up behind me and just as you did like the computer killed me and then did a fatality on sonya and i was like I'm sorry I killed you. <laughs> so, that was my most embarrassing beat right there, is that I just failed. Yeah, my most embarrassing one was this kid. He was he must have been like nine or ten years old, and he just was harping on me all day. Please play a game with me. Please, please. I want to play Sonya, and I want you to play her. And um, okay, I'll do it. So I finally, I sit down, and about five minutes in, he just stops, and he goes, yeah. Suck. <laughs> Kids are quite honestly brutal. <laughs> I didn't tell you I was good. Right? <laughs> I just told you I'd play. That's a yeah. Word. The only time I walk up to these games are for photo ops. <laughs> right. Oh, God. Wow. Well, um, uh, as Guy mentioned, uh, I worked at Midway for a while, and we actually uh, had met back in, I believe, 99, around when MK Gold was uh, being promoted at a, at um, E3. I believe it was in Atlanta that year. And um, I did tech support for a while with Guy, and we'd get some of the most interesting fans uh, that would call... Uh -huh. And <laughs> uh, for a while, I was the voice on the automated system, and this one guy called one day and perfectly emulated my voice and cited the menu system, and it was surreal. Um, and he could do it on cue. I mean, like, if you pressed, like, one or two on the phone, he'd know from the tone of the button pressed, and he'd, like, verbatim read the whole script in John's voice. It, might, it was yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you on a much grander scale, being in the public spotlight as Sonia, I'm sure, have, uh, probably have some interesting fan stories that you might 
could share? Um, actually, no, there are a couple, but nothing really, really weird. Um, it, that's one thing that I really, really like. You know, I had two different audiences in my modeling career. You know, the first part of it was the swimwear stuff that I would do and the Playboy and all that stuff. And um, that was, you know, that kind of audience. And then, you know, I got into the video games. Suddenly my audience turned into these younger, this younger crowd who just kind of looked at me like a superhero. Mm -hmm. So, and one thing about gamers is they're gamers and they sit behind these computers and they're very respectful, you know, and they're very shy. Um, I, I've never been really rooted out by anybody. It's, um, it's really, I really have enjoyed it. You know, the fan is, that's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the couple times where I have been rooted out was because, um, like I didn't answer a message or I didn't accept a friend request or something. But I limit I limit my my audience on Facebook because I don't right. want to miss my family and my friends and you know the feeds get overwhelming. Yeah. So um, I try to limit it and then everybody's telling me you got to have a fan page you got to have a fan page and well I do but it's for my art. Mm. Um, it's just it's sometimes it's just overwhelming me having four kids and stuff and um, trying to keep up with all of that is is um, kind of gets to me at, at times you know but. Um, you know, I think the worst, it was a, actually a sad story where there was somebody who was messaging me and it was kind of threatening. And he, um, so I had kind of publicized what he was saying to me and it ended up that he had autism. I remember that. Yeah. And so I had to, I had to actually call out the dogs on him because he went into hiding. He was very scared. And that was the last time that I had ever retaliated back from somebody attacking me because you never know you never know what's going on with somebody you don't know what their story is you don't know if they're hurt or you know has psychological problems or if they have a disability so when I do get rooted out or I get a weird message or whatever I just ignore it now probably for the best too yeah yeah, yeah absolutely in this day and age for sure so with your with your painting, um, that's kind of your current focus right now. Are are you having any openings in a gallery coming up, or any kind of new exciting things? Um, I do the shows in Chicago, the art shows in Chicago, and they're all jury jury um, based shows. So um, the quality of these shows are really nice, and you know I'm working with hundreds of other artists who inspire me and. Um, I just I feel really fortunate to be able to do this just five years in, mm-hmm. and do these big shows in Chicago. I feel like I'm pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and I have to do, again at oh, very cool. And and do you do you sell any of your art online? Yeah, I have a I have a, a website, and then I, I actually mostly sell stuff off of Facebook when it comes to online stuff. Um, I do have a website though that always needs to be updated. So, if anybody wants to update my website, that would be good. That's funny because I think I asked you just this morning about one of the paintings. It's like, no, I, I think I'm keeping that one. Like, I don't, I don't know if I have that one still, or, or I don't actually even know which ones I have listed because it's been like over a year since I updated, and most of them are sold. But yeah. I can repaint them, so I keep them on. There. there you go. Yeah. You but know, I was, had somebody where I could just like take a picture of my painting, give them the information, and then they update it for me because I absolutely hate it. It's a tedious thing. It's not very fun. Yeah. Especially when I could be painting. Really yeah, exactly. Fun. Right. Yeah. That's what you want to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to be hard. To, you know, to me, I would I would think I wish I was such an artist like that, but to, to, to create something and then, you know, see it go away into somebody else's hands you're like you know that's my baby that's that's part of me and it's kind of it would feel like it'd be really hard to let go it's at first of, of because, something you know you put your heart and your soul into it and um especially when i did the real the realism at first because mm-hmm. the would take a lot longer to create um and you know i i would go up and down in my pricing and not, and just have this 
this guilt, mm -hmm. um, you know, selling it. And then, you know, five years later, I'm like, hey, see you later. <laughs> you know, I've always believed that art goes to the person it was intended to in the long run. So, you know, yeah, it, it finds its proper home. Yeah, my, gra you. my grandfather felt the same way. He was a painter as well. Uh, he painted for like Universal Studios, like stuff you'd see on set, you know, background paintings or bullet holes on cars or billboards for um, Universal Studios. So I've always had that kind of want to paint as well yeah. you know based from my my grandfather but uh what guy said yeah he he kind of always had that same uh philosophy is you know the, the painting will find its owner you know and it always does it always finds the owner and it's perfect for that person it's like it's meant right. to be but you know my fiance i'll have stuff on the walls and then i'll take it down for a show and um and then he'll he'll get upset if i sell it mm -hmm. and you don't get attached to the kids, you know. <laughs> Not the painting kids. <laughs> There's the quote for we put when we release this. You don't get attached <laughs> to, to the, the kids. kids. There's, there's, there's still a parenting show to be built out of this. I'm convinced. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, um, I definitely, you know, again, just thank you so much for stopping by, and I, I wanted to take a moment to thank you for being a part of our show and um, also you know since you're here it's been a while since we've talked face to face like this I just wanted to let you know how much of a, I've appreciated your friendship over the years um, you know I, touch. I remember it was like AOL.com at first <laughs> oh my gosh yeah and I still have my old my old email address from back in the oh, day what? <laughs> oh god it's so old my junk mail comes uh-huh <laughs> Uh -huh. Exactly. But, you know, I, I've known you from both the arcades and, in, and your personal uh, life as well over the years. And, 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 you know, you're definitely a warrior on screen, but as a friend, you are truly one of the strongest people I know. Oh, thanks, Guy. You make me cry. Aww. Aww. <laughs> but, you know, I just... I appreciate you guys calling me, and I love doing stuff like this. That's, um, you know, keeps me young. <laughs> well, we're very grateful to have you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Very Thank appreciated. You. It's been a pleasure to see you again. Yeah. And good luck to you and all the in your future endeavors and the art. And we're excited to we'll see more about you. Uh, the Combat Con. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think it's September twenty third. I I should really look before. <laughs> we'll we'll definitely look it up and we'll get all the details out and we'll we'll start spreading the word. September twenty third. Awesome. Okay. Great. Yeah, so very very cool. It's on Facebook, all of it. So just, oh, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, we never truly escape the combat, do we? <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, again, thank you so much for stopping by. Hey, and as always... Wait, wait. What? Are you a married guy? Oh, you're going to put me on the spot. Like that. Okay. Oh. I thought this was your interview. Oh, okay. Table right, turned. Um, I was thinking we could do a double wedding or something. Ooh. That could be cool. Oh. All right, well, let, let's discuss plans, like, offline. And, like, hey, we can do a double <laughs> wedding. I'm by the beach these days. This could be awesome. Um, all right, but, yeah, we're, we're getting soon. Uh, we're, we're finally, like, legitimately starting to get plans. Wow. Was not expecting that question. All right. He <laughs> turned around on you. Man, He's flip the you. script. Okay. But anyway, you guys. He's <laughs> <turned> red. <laughs> and all right, you guys. Thanks for stopping by. And, as always, it's all geek to us. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Thank soon. you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Fatality God. there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was, a, that was a friendship. <laughs> yeah, that was a friendship. Starting this. <laughs> right, now the questions are going to renew. Thank you, dear. That oh, was the gosh. biggest verbal uppercut I've ever experienced. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, okay. So. <laughs> I left that later. You'll probably edit it out. <laughs> no, we'll keep it. it, it embarrassing me. The right thing. Definitely keep that. Oh, God, yeah. yes. It was a package being delivered at just the right moment. <laughs> it, it's always the way. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for this. I really, you know, just appreciate this. You thank know. you, guys. Yeah. Some good yep. luck with the show. Thank you so thank much. You. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Hope it goes and viral. <laughs> if, 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 you know, it's, uh, we're hoping so. Um, and we'll definitely let you, you know, see it. And
help right. you get with your seal of approval and all that good stuff. She's going to go, delete and it! Delete it all! <laughs> They'll have to come back with a blonde wig and it'll just be off. <laughs> okay, I'll do it one more time just for you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> I hate you so much. I really do. <laughs> oh, lordy lord. Oh. All right, I'm going to back up in the studio. All right, we'll have fun meeting here. We'll catch up soon. Have a wonderful day.